All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit on a Thursday morning. I guess y'all know by now the debate is tonight. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is this story out of West Virginia. And it's weird to hear this story in these times because so much is going on. I don't know, but you already know that a large percentage of the black population feels like sometimes uh, Caucasians or Europeans will adopt black children almost as if it's some type of novelty or they're some type of accessory. But what we're going to talk about today is this case out of West Virginia where this couple actually enslaved five black children. Yeah, they turned them into slaves. And they were uh, charged with trafficking and a host of other things. And I'm doing a reaction to Anthony Brian Logan's reporting of this story. And I want you to check it out. This is for fair use in the 1976 Copyright Act for commentary educational purposes. Check out this story. Human trafficking, human rights violations, and I don't think I've ever seen an indictment like this in all of my time. It alleges human trafficking, human rights violations, the use of forced labor, human rights violations specific to the fact that these children were targeted because of their race. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about a white couple in Sissonville, West Virginia adopting five black children and forcing them into slavery quite literally if you see the indictment you see the charges talking about human trafficking of a minor forced labor of a minor things of that nature are in the actual documents and the reason why i mentioned the race is because these children were targeted because of their race to become slaves now the couple are originally from washington state and they adopted these children in Washington and brought them to West Virginia. Now, I saw this on Oliver Matt, Right Wing Angels page. Shout out to him for posting it. And it really touched me because I'm from this area. I was born in Charleston, West Virginia, which is like 15 minutes from Sissonville. I know about this area in Sissonville. I'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. And this is really shocking and really crazy. Now, we have a lot of details to get into. But first things first, let's check out a news clip here. I will link to everything in the description. If you're on IG, visit a link in the bio. Go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. A Sissonville couple accused of human trafficking and forced labor of adopted children, including two teenagers who were found locked in a barn in Sissonville. Well, they're back in jail. Now, during their arraignment this afternoon, Judge Mary Claire Aker significantly increased the bonds for Gene Whitefeather and Donald Lance. Anna Saunders joins us live in the studio tonight with the reason. Anna? Hey, Gina, before setting their bonds to $500,000 cash each, Judge Aker said she has never seen an indictment quite like this. And then not now, before they continue, I've not seen anything quite like this in recent history. You would think that we are in a late 1800s, post-slavery, something like that. Now, since 2024, and this is happening in real life. This is not a skit. It's not a prank. It's not a joke. This is dead serious. You have these people who literally got these black children from, I guess you would say, orphanage, wherever they were, and placed them into actual slavery. They had them in the barn. It was slave-like conditions. Let's keep on going. Not only alleges the trafficked black children adopting them from shelters and foster care, forcing them to work, but that they specifically targeted them because of their race. Jeannie Whitefeather and Donald Lance came in on their own for their arraignments, but left in cuffs after Judge Mary Claire Aker set their bonds at 500000 more than double what they had already paid. Now, I read about this. They had already paid like 200000 and then they... We're out on bond, I suppose, and when they came back, they had to pay 500000 or that was a new bond. I don't know if they're able to make it, but that's what they are being charged with. Now, some may say that they're just trying to get money from them, and really, listen. I wonder why mainstream media 
<clears throat> is not reporting on this story. I just happened to see Anthony Bryant report on the story, and I thought it was interesting about how <clears throat> there is no coverage. You know what I mean? Especially with CNN or MSNBC or whatever, they haven't been doing no follow up. But this, I don't think that this is the only instance where something like this is going on. Listen to the details of this case. I'm not even mad at them just fleecing all the money, taking whatever they can, and then locking them up, giving them the rope, whatever. I'm not even mad at that. Let's keep on going. So I don't think I've ever seen an indictment like this in all of my time. It alleges human trafficking, human rights violations, the use of forced labor, human rights violations specific to the fact that these children were targeted because of their race and their use as basically slaves from what the indictment alleges. Along with human trafficking and neglect to a serious risk of bodily injury or death, I don't find the bond to be sufficient. White Feather and Lance were first arrested last October when a welfare check turned into the discovery of two teens apparently locked in a shed where investigators said they lived in deplorable conditions. Look at this. You see these conditions? They had them in this shed. That's, that's where they were, and they were forced to live there and work out of there behind the Sissonville home. One other kid was found inside the house and two others were not home, all adopted by the couple. The indictment brought more than a dozen new charges against them alleging human trafficking and forced labor, also civil rights violations, as investigators believe they targeted these children specifically from a shelter because they were black, forcing them to work as slaves. White Feather and Lance were originally in Washington State, and it is alleged they brought the children with them to Sissonville when they moved. Counts nine through twelve allege the use of forced slave labor, which I read as slavery. Bond was initially set at $200,000 cash, and they were both able to post it. Prosecutors have said in a new complaint for forfeiture, the couple sold a $725,000 80-acre ranch in Washington. So this is in Tonneskit, Washington. If you guys know what it is, y'all let me know in the comments. Washington State and sold their Sissonville home to post bond, and they believe both of these properties were paid for through trafficking. Now, my question is, what exactly were they doing? to make money from this operation. Now, I, I really, maybe I'm asking the question. I don't really want to know the answer, but I am kind of curious. That will be decided in a separate court matter. But because of this, prosecutors say they found discrepancies in the financial affidavit Lance filled out for a court appointed attorney, leading to a new charge on his indictment. Some of the information on his face is inaccurate. Lance had to fill out a new affidavit today as the two were taken back into custody now the next time these two are scheduled to appear in court is for their scheduled trial in no in september prosecutors noted there are volumes of evidence in this case for all sides to go through now in terms of the bond issue with how the original bonds were paid for that is to be worked out at a later date live in the studio anna saunders eyewitness news we have more great good evening and thank you for joining so that's what's going on out there in west virginia assistantville now there's a lot i want to say here um, there's so much I want to say. First of all, like I said, I was born in this particular area, Denial County, that's like right up the way from where I was born. I got a lot of family in this area. Sissonville, from what I know, is like a suburb, a veteran community of Charleston. It's not known to be a dangerous place. And quite frankly, in 2024, although there are still some dangerous places in West Virginia where you probably don't want to go, it's not necessarily because they're racist, although I want to let him talk a little bit so you can get the feel of what he's saying because he's from there how he just said there's still places that you probably shouldn't go but it's amazing that this is not widely reported in mainstream media and like i said i don't believe this is the only instance of people using homeless shelters and uh foster cares and adoption agencies taking people into slavery and using them in those type of ways. Let him finish. So there are some racist places. The danger is because you probably go run into some tweakers, people that are just high on drugs and violent that way. You're talking about people are in abject poverty and high on meth and crack and fentanyl. 
pills because of uh, Big Pharma intentionally dumping all these pills into the region as a test subject. But that's a different story, and I digress. The point is, the danger in West Virginia is not really about some kind of racism thing. It's about the, the drugs and the violence that may come from that. And again, these individuals were from Washington State, and they trafficked these children to West Virginia. Now, I don't know why they had to go here to do this, but whatever the case may be, I hope that these individuals get the rope, 100%. And you know what? I was thinking about this. And the thing about this is <clears throat> no ambulance, no uh, oversight of where these children are, no home checks. It's almost as if the system has some type of complicity with this situation. You know what I mean? Because all the way from Washington State to Virginia, that's a lot of that's a long way to be moving uh, adopted children or people that you've met in shelters or however they come across it. But it's more to the story than meets the eye. And I was kind of scratching my head, like, what does it remind me of? I was thinking about another case that this reminds me of, and I about ruby frankie over there in utah remember the the quote-unquote mommy vlogger she did the exact same thing well not quite the exact same thing in the case of ruby frankie she uh locked her own kids up and used food as a weapon starved her kids had them outside in the bacon sun things of this nature treating her children basically like slaves and was making money off of them because they had the vlog they had the big youtube channel that brought in a lot of money. They had a podcast and all kind of stuff that emanated from the traffic they would get from these kids who were being placed in really deplorable conditions. Very similar to what they were doing in West Virginia, but those adopted kids, obviously the big difference is that they were not the biological children and there was a racist element in it because they were targeted due to being black. But yeah, if you're out in Sissonville, if you're anywhere in West Virginia and you're a black person, you kind of, you're going to stand out. It's 97% white state. I mean, Charleston has a pretty big black population, obviously. But once you go beyond that and you're a black person, you're going to stand out. That's probably why they had him in the shed, things of this nature. That's why there was a welfare check done. Maybe some neighbors had not seen the kids in a while. Maybe there was some suspicious activity. They do the welfare check. Oh, wow, what do we have here? We have you locking these kids up, using them as slaves. They're going to go. Did you guys know this about West Virginia? That it was considered dangerous for, for black people? I mean, it's a lot coming out on this story, and he's revealing a lot because, like I said, he's from there. So he's telling you his perspective from somebody who's not just blogging, but somebody who actually lives in West Virginia. So... As I close, I want to say this. I hope this couple gets the ultimate, gets the rope, gets the chair, gets the needle, or a combination of all of the above. This is really crazy to happen in 2024, but it can happen. Now, luckily, we live in the USA, and there are laws against this kind of thing. So if somebody does do it, then they get punished. They get caught. They get punished. They get sent to the penitentiary, and that's that. Now, some parts of the world, you go to China, Africa, uh, other parts of Asia, et cetera. Well, hey, human trafficking, forced labor is not really a big deal. And some of the forced labor is used to create some of the things you need the most in your everyday life, unfortunately. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on this whole situation? Do you know about Sissonville, Canal County, this particular area? Are you surprised? Uh, are you not surprised? How about these people? What should be the punishment for them? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. As I said, I was born in this area. I got family out here. I've been out there a lot. I know about Sissonville. They did that show from MTV called Buck Wild in Sissonville. This is like a bedroom community, it's like a suburb type area. It's not a place where you would think this kind of thing would happen, but sometimes you never know. You could live in a beautiful community, gated community, and right next door could be a monster. Sometimes you're not always aware of what's happening. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that is all I got to say for this video. 
If you like what you heard, please comment. Great shit. Yeah. I really wanted you to hear his take because I didn't know that Virginia had that reputation. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to keep following this story because I'm quite sure more is going to come out. So, like I said, we're going to watch the debate. And, you know, that's going to be a frenzy. Everybody going to have uh, an opinion or commentary on this for the next couple of days because it's sure to be entertaining with uh, Jim Crow Joe and Trump. So, sign it to you at Detroit, Detroit's HPTV. Support Detroit's Black Thought and Action Collective. It's a nonprofit out of Detroit. The Cash App is in the channel description. As always, keep your head on swivel. Salute to all patriots. Peace. Like, share, and subscribe.